All right, guys, John here. Today I got an interesting one. Actually involves a Apple Watch and some air fittings. So, of course, I've been working on this Dream Shop here and getting down to the minor stuff now. So I didn't really know what I was going to do for air fittings. You know, we're used to, well, at least I am, to this style, pretty common. You know, pick it up from Harbor Freight here, nothing new there. It's about, I don't know, I think this is 10 bucks for this kit. So pretty inexpensive, especially if you got a lot of air tools and or connections and hoses. But what I hate about this is when you go to detach an air hose. So there's times, yes, you should always be wearing hearing protection. But there's times when you just want to air up a tire. Well, I'm not going to be grinding or sawing or anything like that. So why do I want to put hearing protection on just to do something like that? And also, you know, if you're in a shop atmosphere, you know, a dealership, something like that, and there's a guy over there wrenching, and you're over here uh, disconnecting and reconnecting airlines, yeah, it can get quite loud and hurt the ears if you're close to the guy, you know, working the next bay over. So, anyhow, I've done a lot of research and I've come to the conclusion I'm not going to be using these fittings in my shop anymore. Yes, I've used them for a long time, but I will be getting rid of these pretty soon. So, now to replace that, to me, you've got two options, at least that I can find on the market. The first one, the cheapest one, is these uh, Prevost, probably saying it wrong, connectors here, and then these industrial uh, Parker connectors here. Now one thing to note, there is a lot of differences in standards. There's like four common ones. So there's the industrial standard, there's the uh, Euro standard, and then there's the automotive standard, which would be the higher uh, quality, high flow ones you would find at Harbor Freight, not these, you know, the, the next step up ones. Uh, and then I s believe there's a Japanese standard. So, but here, basically when you're looking at these style in the US, you're gonna either see the industrial, which for Prevost is going to be blue button, and Parker is going to be yellow, or you're going to see uh, green button ones for the, again, Euro High Flow. And on the Parker ones, I believe this strip here, of course, is green instead of yellow. So those are the two common ones. You guys will have to weigh the options. Maybe I'll do a video testing that down the road. But for me, I've got some of these Parker ones picked up at a garage sale or an auction. I, I can't remember. Um, so I've got three of these. And then, of course, one of these as you see here. But you'll definitely notice the difference between $25 and $50 for this thing. Yeah, crazy. But you will see the difference here. I will prove it to you. Um, but I think overall I will probably be going Prevost to save the money. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'll get the other camera and we can dive right in and take a look and let me explain why you really need to start looking at your connectors. All right guys, so I got hearing protection on. We got the decibel reader here up on the watch. And I just wanna show you what happens when you disconnect these different connectors. So on the other end here, we have a 25 foot hose. So normally with this standard style connector, you will get a ton of noise. So we're gonna see how this does, reconnect, see how the Parker does, reconnect, and see how the Prevost does, decibel wise, so.
So you can see there that uh, that was 102. That was about 85 with the Parker. And then we'll get the Prevost about in the same area. Uh, that actually did. Ooh, that actually did 108. So let's try that again. Still 106. Maybe if I turn it a little bit different. Still 106 decibels. We'll go with the uh, Parker again. 85 to 90 guys. And then if we go with the old school, 106. So let me take this hearing protection off. But I will say, guys, even though the watch is showing a little bit different, uh, it is much different with this Prevost versus the standard. Yeah, it is of a higher decibel than this Parker, but it's definitely a lot quieter than the standard connector. So... So guys, at the end of the day, I'm going to say if you want the quietest connection where it's not going to kill your ears, uh, the Parker is definitely the way to go. You've seen it on the watch. Maybe you can hear it here uh, through this. I don't know. I guess I'll have to see that in uh, post-production there, see how that sounds. But decibel-wise, you can clearly see this is not as loud in person. That is the case as well. But I would say this is almost a 50% reduction when you compare it to the standard connector there. So just keep that in mind. You know, if, if you want it nice and quiet, I would definitely recommend the Parker. I'll see if I could find some links to it. I think on their site, it retails for 50. Maybe we can find it cheaper from somebody else. Um, it definitely is really expensive, but yeah, I, I, I guess at this point you get what you pay for and you can't really get your hearing back. I mean, you can get hearing aids, but who wants to really wear those? So just something to consider, guys, if you're using air tools a lot, try to save your ears, especially, um, you know, if you're not doing a lot of grinding, if you're... If you're just using an air chuck, I don't know where it went, to air up a tire here and there, you're probably going to forget to put ear protection on. And then once you go to, you know, disconnect the hose from the wall or whatever, you know, you're going to get that loud burst of air, which it's going to harm your ears. So, but another thing, guys, you, you got to keep in mind, uh, when you're looking at this versus this versus this is if you notice there when this hose disconnected you know it shot out of this coupler it took off once this collar is pulled back it's gone if you don't have a good hold on it two hands it's gone here you can actually do this one-handed you know so you're pulling back it just let the air out then you've got to push it forward and now you can take the hose, whatever, off. So if you look at that again, if you pull back once, it's still not coming out of the connector. You actually have to push it forward and now remove. The same thing with the Prevost. So click it once, it shoots up a little bit. Again, you cannot remove this section, this coupler from here. Click it again. And now you can remove it. So, you know, two things here, guys. Uh, if you're looking at redoing your shop, definitely get something like this. Throw this garbage away. It's 
dangerous to your ears more than these are. I mean, none of them are perfect. You know, you should probably wear hearing protection, but if you're going to be on the crazy side, spend the money with this. Um, and then just for the safety standpoint of hoses or whatever you have connected, whipping out of here, hitting you or whatever you're working on, you know, if you're working on that nice project, that's the last thing you want is to have a car come back that from paint and you're doing something with an air gun, disconnect the hose and the hose whips, takes a nice chunk out of that brand new paint job. So, but anyhow, guys, just my two cents here. Hopefully you found it useful and please stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.